Thank you. You have had a very rousing session and she has really fired you up. So now we have to keep you engaged. We have five people. The way we will run it is we will explain the agenda a little bit. We will talk a little bit on that topic for about 20-25 minutes. We want questions. That's the only way this thing. So we will create space to take a few questions, maybe four or five, and then we will summarize it. So for your questions, prepare. You don't have to worry too much. And we are here most of the day. You can catch us offline also and do it. Now the topic is about the startup ecosystem, growth, opportunities, infrastructure. I think you've already learned that we have grown a lot to be number one. And as an entrepreneur, there are different ways you can think and look at it. There is no textbook. There is no standard practice. Almost anything works. The hot thing, Gen AI, is just tinkering. There is no science. It is just tinkering. And Atal Labs are tinkering labs. So I will give a very short frame, and then we will go ahead and I'll ask each one. I'll ask each of my participants to speak for about five to seven minutes. And then to manage time, I will interfere if you are taking more time. And then we'll take questions. You can think of business ideas in two or three ways. One is business as usual. Can you make it cheaper? Can you make it easier to adopt a new way of doing it? A lot of quality improvements are improving business as usual. That's also a good market. VCs will not get excited, but India has a lot of problems, a lot of large population. That's also a fairly good business. Commodity businesses can also be very powerful. Zip, zip manufacturers from Taiwan is a very large monopolist. The second is grow the business. Can you move to another district? Can you move to another country? Can you move so far healthcare? Can you move to the armed forces? Can you go to pre-hospitalization? So grow the business is normally where VCs go, grow the business. The third is transform, which is completely innovative technology like quantum, nanotechnology, space, those are more complex. You need a lot of obstinacy because it typically needs four to seven years to succeed and it's also a lot of luck, funding also. So that is one way. The second way of thinking about is the market segment, consumer, government, business. Is it cotton export, Tirupur housery? Is it something else? So that is another way to do it. It's a domestic market, export market. Typically at Thai, we will tell startups at least 20% of your business should be outside. You won't make enough money by depending only on customers here. They're too demanding for value. And the third way of looking at it is, what is your objective? Making money, of course. But if you are passionate about some cause, you relatives had some health problem, you want to solve it. You personally have several, that is uh, obstinacy that is essential. Ultimately, a lot of success comes from your passion. I will leave it there. Now I will ask each one of my participants to present their point of view on the growth, the opportunities, and the ecosystem. So I will start with Dr. Srinivas. Yeah, could you, yeah, go ahead. Could you talk a little bit about this? Five to seven minutes. Okay. I'm totally into IT field with nearly uh, 22 to 25 years of experience in all kind of um, IT areas, right? Uh, pr primarily, I come with uh, ERP software uh, where I started my career as a developer and uh, I converted myself or evolved myself as a uh, a kind of a consultant to implement uh, where I used to put up all my uh, effort or uh, support towards all the customers across uh, implementation, upgradation, consulting, everything on the ERP. So everybody should understand what is ERP. ERP is all about a business, so which is why we are here. So how to build up and how I came up into a startup, right? So uh, now I am the CEO of two, I would say a startup. Can, after, can you hear him? Everyone can hear him? So even after 10, 15 years, I would be happy to, uh, you know, to 
explain myself as a startup. Because each and every day, a single day is a new day for us where we need to work with the customers, suppliers, vendors, students, everybody. So now I am uh, the CEO, CTO of uh, uh, two uh, companies called uh, Bicom Technology and Zadroid IT Solutions. So that, that is how I started my career. So how did I start? So the ecosystem, how did I evolve myself? When I was into consulting, so uh, earlier I didn't differentiate like a, a kind of um, IT sector and a kind of MBA. I see most of you are from MBA sector, right? So where uh, directly you yourself will get aligned uh, through your academic stating like, you, you know, everything uh, precisely like how to get into administration, how to get into finance, how to get into recruitment, everything. So each and every category is well defined. However, we, uh, uh, to differentiate ourselves uh, from MBA uh, to the IT sector, BE or BTEC, whatever it is, we understand only the technologies. So using that technology, we need to get into the administration also. So that is how I, I, I changed my career. Like we get into uh, uh, working with the customer on ERP uh, softwares where uh, uh, there are a lot of ERP softwares, right? Oracle ERP, PeopleSoft ERP, SAP, uh, Salesforce. There are a lot of things which is coming in. So when you connect with the customer, okay, so the most important thing is uh, acknowledging all the things, okay? So be, be potential uh, to maintain your reputation and everything. So you have to understand what the business needs. So that is how you start getting your reputation and uh, uh, timely acknowledgements and uh, maintaining the ETA. What is ETA? For example, you, 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 you tell like, you know, I will be completing the task in two, three days. So which means you have to complete in two, three days, right? So on the third day, you should not go and tell, stating like, no, I'm sorry, I cannot do that. So you, everything should be pre-planned. So you have to execute in, in that way. So from day one, you have to start working with the customers uh, and uh, get, get their, how to tell you, so uh, get their uh, trust on your behalf and then that is how you have to start flying. So ERP is a kind of uh, uh, the entire process, end to end, starting with manufacturing, inventory, warehouse, supply chain. Supply chain means two types, okay, sales and distributions, finance. In finance, it is DL, AP, AR, fixed assets, everything. So the entire cultural process where you have to learn everything and then uh, you have to transform that into the business. So this is how I need to explain myself how, how to get into a startup. I'm not sure whether it is good. Would, you, would you like to add where you see startup ecosystem growth and opportunities, or is there any specific infrastructure challenge you'd like? Like, uh, you know, our population is 1.4 billion. So we don't want to concentrate across the globe, okay? You concentrate within India. So there are n number of opportunities. So one diversity factors, I could say, like, you know, the startup, there are like, um, Earlier we started with 4,000 startups and now we are into 82,000 startups. So I see in a different way. Uh, what is that, right? Uh, earlier, earlier when you see on each houses, every every areas like you have n number of departmental stores. Okay, so earlier it was like 83,000 or 84,000 departmental stores everywhere across, but now everything has been scrutinized into a single departmental store called as a mode or Reliance or whatever it is. So in the either way there is a change. So in that way, in this way, both the way we are changing, uh, we are seeing a good change, uh, which is going in the uh, in the vertical growth only. So that is one. And the second thing, everywhere there is an opportunity, we have to make utilize of that. So poke your nose into uh, each and every area, be it on the academics, be it, be it on your educational qualification or uh, getting into the business. From day one, please poke your nose everywhere and understand your passion and move towards your passion. It's not yeah. because okay, my, my friend is interested in that, so I need to support your friend. Of course, your friend will support, but your passion, you should decide and you should be the pioneer of your passion. So that is the main startup of your goal to, get, to start thank, the uh, startup. Thank, thank you, thank you. Thanks, I'll come back to the next. So, Dr. Avinash, is, he calls himself a biopreneur, which means biology and entrepreneur, genomics and entrepreneur. Thank you for providing me this opportunity. Um, uh, how many of you here are uh, with the biotech background? Any of you? Nobody. Uh, Everyone is a biology, so you're all in biotech. Your health, your wealth, everything depends on you. Uh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So, uh, my name is Dr. Avinash. So, I have done my PhD from 
IIT Madras and uh, so uh, I am the founder of uh, TrueNom or uh, Atrono Life Genomics Private Limited. We are the uh, largest biotechnology and genomics startup currently in Tamil Nadu. So we are based out of Chennai and uh, we have we have developed a platform, a technology platform with uh, US patent and EU and uh, uh, the global global patents uh, granted to us uh, for chronic disease management. So wherein we use genomic based biomarkers to identify very, very critical uh, diseases, chronic diseases in a non-invasive way. So such as for example cancer and all, you require uh, biopsy to be done, you require invasive uh, processes for the treatment. So we do it completely non-invasively, just through a blood test. And we have developed a platform for that, for different uh, disease conditions, where you can do the non-invasive way of diagnosis. We also have contributed during the COVID towards the development of a kit called Quick. If you see in airports, major airports, there were two types of tests which were available. One was rupees 3,500 during COVID when you were traveling. So if you, uh, it was 3,500, another was 1,800. The one which was made by 1,800 was by us. And we were awarded by the President of India, at that time uh, Sri Ramnath Kovindji, uh, for our contribution for a point of care diagnostic test for COVID. And we are also developing tests, a similar point of care uh, diagnostic platform for different infectious condition also. So we have a, about uh, uh, 10,000 square feet uh, laboratory at the center of Madras in uh, Anna Saleh. And also we are building a manufacturing unit separately at uh, outskirts. So uh, how I entered into entrepreneurship? So it was based on my research. So when I was doing my PhD, I was on to cancer research. At that point of time, uh, the uh, most of the research was based on normal biomarker discovery in your cancer. So what we found was, based out of our uh, research was that there was a something called circulating DNA, which is a DNA which will circulate in your blood after all your cells have been died. That is, there is a regular process of cell death where the new cells are generated and old cells get shedded out. So when the old shed, uh, cells get died, you, they release their DNA and that DNA can be detected in your bloodstream. That DNA we use to identify the changes in your biosystem. And with that, we make the diagnosis of uh, various conditions, not necessarily cancer, so different conditions, different chronic conditions. And uh, the, the reason, another reason why we have entered into this is uh, this platform is because my own grandfather had a cancer and he passed away because of cancer. So that, that the one was the reason why I was into the research onto cancer. And uh, the technology platform, as I uh, mentioned, we thought of initially with the cancer, then we moved on to other uh, chronic diseases such as organ transplantation and autoimmune disorders, etc. So we are currently uh, the largest genomic company in Chennai and uh, uh, not only in Chennai, currently I can tell it's the third largest uh, genomic diagnostic provider in the country and uh, uh, we also uh, uh, have American, yeah, we also have investors, investments from across the world. So we are expanding, we have been uh, one of our papers, we are representing our country, India, at a very, uh, that is, we are the only people from Asia, I can tell, 
to represent uh, in transplantation genomics in Houston, Texas, for which we are going uh, this uh, May month. Yeah, uh, that's what uh, I can tell. Thank you. Thank you. I was getting a little worried he will ask me to volunteer to give some tests. <laughs> so, thanks a lot. Okay, let's ask uh, Mr. Suhel if you would like to speak a little. So, uh, good morning everyone. Uh, my name is Sohail. I belong to Atal Innovation Mission as an innovation lead. Uh, so, few of you might have noticed that there is something called a Community Innovation Center, Atal Community Innovation Center right here in this campus. So, as Mukund had earlier said, ki we are in the business of creating incubation infrastructures across the country. So, I think to start off, as a startup or to get onto an idea, uh, you need to solve a local problem. It can be a, a local problem as close as something happening to your family, like Dr. Avinash said. It can be a local problem like one of the ladies had mentioned a textile thing. The second thing is what you will do as a unique value proposition. So if you are building a textile, which is, let's co consider you are building an ethnic wear, what unique value proposition you bring into the table, for example, you, why someone shouldn't buy from Pothis or Nalli Silks and why someone should buy from you? Uh, that should be your unique value proposition. Uh, and I think after that, key, how are the resources placed? You want to do a certain business, but if the resources are not allowing you, then you will start burning and things will not turn into your favor until and unless that ecosystem supports your idea. And that's where when Mukun said Ki, it is a centralized system in seed fund, where, wherein you are mapped to a center which provides a specific uh, ecosystem to cater to your own style of startup. And the last thing is, uh, I would say, last two things. One is how you cater from research to commerce, because we, I have visited personally Baba Atomic Research Center and CSIR, and they are sitting on the pile of gold. But no one knows how to create that research into commerce. I think Dr. Avinash has done that beautifully, and many congratulations to him. But. Uh, Anything, if you still research and if you think of that and think it in a commercial way also, and people have demonized earning money so much, we are here, like, earning money is not bad. Like, it is bad to obviously uh, do something negative to earn money, but earning money is not bad. Like, I think that connotation should go away. Finally, I think we are here to disrupt ONDC, uh, if you anyone knows over here, ONDC is the digital platform wherein we are bringing, creating stacks for uh, and creating level playing field for everyone. Zomato is getting, will get disrupted. Uber will get disrupt, disrupted. Namma Yatri, as we speak, is disrupting Uber and Ola operations in Bengaluru. So there will be more level playing field for you all. We will try to make sure that there is more level playing field. There are less number of uh, mediators or the middle layers. And that's how if you think and if you want to start, you will have a great platform. Thank you. Thank you. I think uh, I went to talk to uh, Wearing artificial intelligence, machine learning, natural language processing, hidden Markov models can be utilized. So those who are into IT, those who are very fond of programming, try exploring. There are ample opportunities in bioinformatics, be it patent, uh, patent discovery, discovery of uh, modeling for uh, drug discovery, or for genomic data analysis, or so many aspects. Try exploring this one field, which has a tremendous potential in the future. Thank you.
Thank you. For those of you who have not understood what is hidden Markov models, Markov is random process and hidden Markov model is otherwise called luck. <laughs> All right, let me ask Manu Ayer. And by the way, we are not Shark Tank, so if you ask for money, it's difficult, but this guy may. Hey, hi everyone, good morning. How are you all? All right, before I get started, no, let's uh, take a quick poll, right? So, are all of you engineers here? No? What, what, are, what are the backgrounds, if I can understand? Like MBA, were most of you? Arts, okay. And there are MBA, MBA crowd also? Okay. Uh, so, how many of you want to be entrepreneurs? I mean, no up high, just very gingerly I see some hands going up. What is the, what is the vision? Everyone want, no one wants to do something on your own? I, I think I counted only three hands. Okay, four. Okay, so let's see, maybe, maybe after, after this uh, panel, maybe a few of you feel more uh, inspired to do something on your own. I'll give you a quick background about myself. Uh, my name is Manu. Uh, I'm an engineer, uh, electrical engineer from IIT Madras. And today I run a deep tech fund. So we do early stage pre-series A uh, investing in core engineering startups uh, across India. So. Uh, we have about uh, 400 crores in capital and we invest in uh, engineering that is developed in India, right? So there is an IP uh, moat in the company. So I don't know if you think about a startup, right? Broadly, you can put it into two buckets as an execution type of startup and then there is a IP uh, startup, right? And so we focus on the latter stage. So similar to what uh, uh, Dr. Avinash uh, is doing. Companies like that are what we invest in. Uh, so we invest in and around uh, the likes of the various incubators, the IITs, the IASC, uh, NITs. We're very active in that ecosystem. And uh, one of the things that we've come across over the last six, seven, eight years of doing this is that today it's the best time to be an entrepreneur. Uh, you know, there are so many resources available for everybody to start off on your own. People have done it at a time when nothing was available. Today, everything is available on a platform to you, right? A gentleman from Startup uh, India came, you know, he spent an hour talking, he's going to talk again. Uh, Atal Incubation Mission is here. And that is just touching the tip of the iceberg. Uh, there are so many incubators, there is a uh, by Iraq, you know, all the large corporates are, have been mandated to give uh, either uh, grants or they are mandated to invest in early stage equity. The Gales, the IOCL, HPCL, BPCL, ARAI, uh, you know, so there is a significant amount of capital that is available at both the grant level, which is non dilutive to, you know, the entrepreneur. There are so many incubators that are now uh, across the country that are offering a fantastic opportunity for you, a test bed for you to try out an idea and you know experiment and learn, right? Uh, I'll just do a quick thought experiment, right? If you guys had to answer, what do you think the most important characteristic of an entrepreneur should be? Does anybody want to? Take a stab at that. Risk. Risk, okay. Any? Passion. What? Passion, sure. I think that, that, that works. Someone from there said something. Challenges, Challenges okay. Innovation, Innovation. okay. Plus. So I would, I would actually uh, echo my sentiment with what this, this lady said. So perseverance, right? I think that is the single most important characteristic of an entrepreneur. Uh, I think, you know, it's, you need to be ready to put all your efforts in it 
you know there will be multiple challenges that will be thrown at you you will come across multiple people who will say no it can't be done and yet you choose to do it right that is the stupidity of being an entrepreneur right that is the i mean the last i'll tell you the last three companies that we in, that we invested in the last company that we gave a term sheet to is taking on spacex right he has spoken to 7 8 10 investors right you are mad right spacex is multi billion dollar company you know how many launches have they done this is a company that is taking on spacex out of tamil nadu that is what we are trying to do uh, uh, going back one company is a company that's taking on panasonic uh, on the cell manufacturing so i'm saying that is the vision that is the uh, abundance of ideas and technology uh, to our earlier points a lot of research is happening in our institutions today but the research has been locked up for you know publishing papers for going to conferences and then it goes into the closet today people are willing to say no i want to commercialize it today professors are saying hey i want to i want to commercialize it and so this is a fantastic opportunity for all of you i think it's a great time to be an entrepreneur i encourage every one of you to explore different opportunities that are available in front of you and you know there are so many people you know on panel your uh, administration who can help you along that path so uh, hopefully we are able to push you on that path thank you i will i'll come back to his points a little later to get you excited but let me pass the mic to someone who has needed a rest thank you sir uh, i will not take too much time so i have already spoken about uh, everything that startup india does the opportunities available here um i'll take a short amount of time to share some personal opinion that i have uh, sort of observed after interacting with a lot of startups in different different settings um sir to sir's point i totally agree that perseverance is very important persistence is very important in the journey of an entrepreneur but one thing uh, that everybody should think about also is de depth when you are thinking of building a business it's not just research or an innovation you have to look at the market aspects of it you need to know uh, where the supply chain is coming from you need to know how how what the margins are so i have seen uh, startups where they spent two or three years in research as well they develop an excellent product but they have never spoken to their prospective customers and that wastes a lot of time because once you have a product ready you go back and then you have to make modifications to see actually what the market wants so somebody who's in college and thinking about entrepreneurship you have an idea you should know ins and outs of everything about that idea what the market is what the market size is where the uh, supply is coming from in the market what is the margin you should have spoken to at least 50 60 customers uh, prospective customers or uh, customer profiles uh, who will be working with so the idea here is ki uh, at the end of the day when you are pitching an idea to somebody uh, at the start you should have thought of all the negative questions that they might ask challenge your thesis and you should have thought about all of that and convince yourself build a great level of conviction at every level is it something that is this problem that needs to be solved is there a commercial angle that is viable is there money to be made here is there a market for this and is this the best solution what are the other players doing for the similar problem i think these are some questions uh, that should come when somebody is thinking an idea go into the depth of an idea before you uh, come and the platforms for uh, here are different i focused a lot of time talking about the seed funding scheme uh, there also you have to pitch to an incubator and incubator has to buy into your idea time should be spent getting a mentor talking to other startups most good universities have in house incubators you can interact with startups learn about their journey what challenges they face foresee all those things and build it into a part of your plan thank you we will take a break from us talking and ask you to give questions my suggestion is twofold please state your name your background management education etc formulate the question that you want and we will try to see and if you have a question for any specific person please name it let's go ahead let's have some questions ye tempo nahi hai 
Ayo. Ya. Lack of energy. Feel free, feel free to ask questions. Hello everyone. My name is Nitya Bhardwaj and I am a first year MBA student. Uh, my question is, like, what are the points that we need to assess? Like, if we are thinking about startup, as Sir said, the first thing we need to see is our business model. And then other than that, what are the things we need to make sure that like before we go out for the funding, that we are well prepared that our startup is going to get a good investment? OK. So just to, just to qualify, there are different ways in which funds are raised. The first round of funding is friends and families. You don't need too much of a plan there. Uh, you will get friends and families to put in some money and get started. So that is first. Then second is seed funding. Seat who your potential customer should be. There is a program uh, at IIT Madras and then I think it's conducted at, across the country called the GDC program. Uh, and once you talk to them, you now understand, because in your mind you will think you are offering a great idea, you are offering a great solution. Whereas it might fall completely flat when you talk to a customer, right? They will give you feedback. They will tell you, hey, no, not this. Pivot it a little bit in this direction and it will work for us, right? And then you pivot, you pivot, you pivot, and then at the end of it, at the end of 100 customer conversations, do you still feel confident about doing what you're doing, or do you need to change direction? Right? So I think that is more important than putting things on paper, you know, doing a business model, doing a financial model. All that comes a little bit later, I would say. Next question. Hello. All right. While you are waiting, let is somebody there? No, we'll come back to the second question little later. I wanted to see if on that side they said, okay, let me provoke. Let me provoke. Now you have heard some what I call textbook theories of uh, entrepreneurship, passion, business model, etc. I don't subscribe to them. So let me now challenge some of these observations. And I will take, there is at Wharton Business School, I, mean, I attended Wharton Business School, so let me, and I had the honor of shaking hands with Jack Will. So anyway, the question to ask is, which is more important, the leader or the follower? You may be surprised, all great organizational, political change or businesses are built more by then followers than by leaders. While histograph historians and journalists will only talk about the leader. Just imagine, what does it take to be a good follower? Let me ask the question. Do you think followers are more important than money? And what does it take to be a good follower? Dr. So uh, to be a good follower, you need to first understand what is the uh, your ideas and what is their ideas and what all the aspects they are following or the ideology. No, no, no. I don't want an answer. I'm provoking. Is a good follower more important than money? Absolutely, a good follower is more important. But money is also equally important because without money, <laughs> Uh, anything is uh, like doing is difficult. So to the VC, do you fund a team or do you fund an idea? Uh, we would fund a team any day, right? The, the strength of the team is what runs the story, right? And the ability of that team to, you know, persevere, to pivot, right? The most successful ideas come out of pivoting, right? You start off saying, I want to go in direction A, but you end up in direction F, right? To go through all those, you know, go through B, C, D, E, and then land at F, you need to have that mental strength. And those are the most successful people. So it is definitely a team. The, I mean, the game is, you know, what is each person in that team contributing? What is he bringing to the table? Ideation, so the thing about ideas is that there are a dime a dozen. Everyone has an idea, right? Nobody really takes it forward and executes. That is the difficult part. Thank you. 
Now let me ask uh, Mr. Nukun, at a central level when you are evaluating, you don't know the people apart from, they may send a video, they may write, you don't know. So you, I assume, tend to favor ideas, business segments more than people. Is that correct or am I wrong? No, so actually, like in terms of the execution of the scheme, the ideas are or the pitches are collected at central level, but they are allocated to incubators. Every incubator gets whoever applicant selects them. Uh, they, I guess, most incubators look at at least 100 to 120 pitches in a month through the scheme, and all of them have their different uh, uh, different parameters for screening applications. But one thing that we also ensure is that before making any funding decision, they have to physically meet the team. Physically. Before meeting the team, no incubator also uh, grants any amount to anybody. Thank you. Now, have I got some of you in, in, interested in asking some more questions? Let's have from this side. Any questions? If, if you are not volunteering, I will pick someone. I'll, I'll come back to you. Questions this side? The lady in yellow. Any questions? Please. Please. Oh, your team. Sorry. Disqualified. No, entry not allowed. OK. Uh, the person with the red tie right in front. Please, question. The backbenchers will be selected first. Yes, please. You're getting a mic. You're getting a mic. Tell a question. My name is Selva Kumar. I'm, I'm MBA first year MBA. Sir, tell about policy. Policy for what? Investment policy. Oh, we invest to make money. Very simple. Help us make money, we will invest. All right. Uh, hey, thanks, Ella Kumar. Sit down. Can I ask? Can I ask a question? Right. I see a lot of people with notebooks out and pen and paper and all. What are you guys writing? Anyone want to stand books? I see a lot of books open. That is a little thought-provoking, I think. All right. The people in, uh, not in black, but white. Anyone, any questions from the white gents? Look, you are not helping incentivize us. We have come, we have flown, we have come here to be of help. And if you are not going to ask questions, it means we are wasting our time or what? Why there is no questions here? So, are we boring you? Huh? Or are you not interested in entrepreneurship? Or you don't know what is entrepreneurship? All right, we have got one person asking. Go ahead. <laughs> Silence, please. Let him ask. Myself, I am Bon Gobinath, sir. I am a first MBA student in Kalasaling University. Uh, I, my first question is of uh, Dr. Abri, sir. Abri, <laughs> sir. Okay. Uh, sir, uh, biotechnology, bi uh, biotechnology is taught up uh, in source with in incubator stage. In incubator stage, you, you suffer the problem, that stage. We explain. Uh, Okay, so what kind of struggles I will, uh, for those who don't know Tamil, I will tell in English also, what he asked, or the gentleman, what is your name? Phone call me sir. Okay. Uh, so, uh, what the gentleman asked was, what are the struggles you face when you start the, at uh, 
at the early stage. So there would be a lot of struggles. It is not that we started in 2016 and now we are in 2024. How many years? Eight years. And right now we are in the bigger level. Why? Because there is a lot of work you need to do. As uh, Mr. Mukun sir said, uh, the most important thing is the perseverance. So you need to be really patient. You may have to work out one, it will not work. The second model, you change it. So, but more, another important thing is you should know that there is a market for particular thing and you should have a conviction most importantly you should have a conviction that yes whatever i am doing is definitely a need for the society you need to find out what is needed in the society suppose i am for example uh, being in a rural part of tamil nadu here in uh, kalasalingam university one of the most important aspect is agriculture right so uh, we see a lot of crops being lost be due to flood or due to drought or due to some haze, something or other rain. So the farmer get into loss. How to prevent it? So there is a need. What all the aspects you can do with your technology to prevent losses for the farmers? Similarly, find out, go to the all the solution, whatever entrepreneurship idea you are going to get, you will get in your surrounding. Look, open properly your eyes and look around your surrounding. Be it in your college, be it in your family, can be in your family, it can be your neighbors, it can be your uh, town, it can be your city, it can be your village. Everywhere you see, you will get an opportunity. Thank you. Now, I cannot speak Tamil, but let me come back to one of the questions on risk. See, risk is a very large part of life, and entrepreneurship is risks. I ran a company in Hong Kong. I had about 100 people, and because of geopolitical situation, eight customers, very large customers, insurance, large deals got cancelled. I could sue them. My agreements were tight, but that's a different story. A large, small company is suing a large company. <laughs> so I went without salary for six months. My entire team had a 50% cut in salary to survive. So it can be a risk. But, and this is important, do listen to me. If you think a government job or a salaried job is less risk, you are mistaken. As the world is changing, governments are not able to get enough tax revenues. They are running on deficit. The U.S. government is 300% in debt compared to its GDP. You think they can keep borrowing and paying? No. Even in India, even in lots of countries, salaried jobs from governments have seen salaries not coming for many months. So risk is there even in those so-called safe jobs. It's just a question of time and ill luck if you are sitting there when the risk crystallizes. So please get out of this idea that there is risk. It's a question of opportunity and there is a lot of support, as Mukund and Suhail have mentioned. And as uh, we have mentioned, there's plenty of support for helping you take the opportunity. And if you fail, you will still get a job with a startup or someone else. That era when a failure meant dhabba, black mark, that is over. There is no longer an issue. Now, I, we are running out of time. So what I will do is I will ask each one of our panelists to give one minute summary, either personal opinion or an idea on what you should do. Can I start with? Um, Dr. Srinivas, you want to say something? One minute. Hi, everybody. Yeah, if you could understand the question correctly, uh, let me speak about the challenges and the, and the, and the risks and the risks what we would uh, face on the entrepreneurship, right? Uh, see, you would have have a plan. You would have already had a plan because you are completing your, uh, your uh, you know, your research and development. That is the time you are going to start 
uh, innovating certain things, which means that is the time you're going to target the customer and you are getting your order to be accomplished, right? Now, <coughs> you are getting all the discussions has and happened, and now you are approaching the customer. So everything has been completed. The next day you're going to sign the papers. 99%, right, everything is going based on the relationship and based on the network, what you have got. Only 1% is based on the process. On my experience, I would say, it's, it's totally different among others, right? The day, there are n number of customers where we are getting in and we are getting and signing the uh, PO or the ordering or um, document, whatever it is. There are like 70 to 80% of the chance where uh, when we are getting into uh, the um, actual project, right, uh, the person, the signing authority of the person would have been relieved, would yeah. have been sacked, would have been gone. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is the most biggest <laughs> and the <laughs> high level of challenges we face. Uh, uh, like, we face during the enterprise. We, we are running out of time. Any concrete final conclusion, or we will? The, the, the conclusion is: you, whatever you think, please do it fast, immediate at the same time. I agree with that. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, two quick, uh, two quick things. I think first thing was Sir's point wherein money is important or uh, the team is important. I think money creates the magic or the enchantment which bounds or spell binds the follower. And then the follower creates the magic and that combined magic leads to greatness. So I think that so is... So in his chicken or egg, he says the egg comes first. Okay. <laughs> and so the last thing, and the last thing is, ki someone said to me long ago, we were discussing about constitution and he said the most beautiful part of the constitution of India is it even serves those it even serves those who don't believe in it. Yeah. I would serve I would tell you that in startup ecosystem today people might have different ideas, the risk and everything, but it will internally serve to those who don't even believe in it. Yeah, that's definitely we all benefit from Denzo and the others delivering food. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, I have a very short point to make. Uh, I saw very few hands compared to what I expected when I said if anybody has even thought of entrepreneurship. And we made some very uh, good points on trade-offs. So once you have a good idea that you have identified, uh, the amount of risk, because there are now a lot of organizations, government support, the ecosystem is coming up in the country. So the risk is not as high as many people think. In fact, I would say if I look at the de demand supply economics, even if you are a very good employee, the demand is so low that you will always get the shorter end of the stick. I so agree. it's a good idea to think about entrepreneurship and utilize all the ecosystem that is coming across the country. 100% agree. Yeah. Uh, the most important challenge you face would be the rejection. Not only from the customers, but also from whoever you are going to seek the funding also or even the incubators or wherever you must believe in that's why i said you must be very much believing in your conviction and you must have a uh, perseverance so that is the most important thing i can tell as a, a ending comment thank you so i think uh, the one takeaway that i would like for all of you guys to have is Forget about your inhibitions. All of you are doing an MBA here, right? Don't be shy to stand up. So I would actually give a hand to uh, Ms. Bharatwaj and poor Gopinath and Selvaraj and whoever stood up, right? I, I saw some people smiling and all. You guys should forget whatever inhibitions you have. Attend such events, you know, meet more people, get ideas, share ideas. That's how it works, right? If you kind of you know, stay under the radar, you know, you're not going to get called out, you know, kind of uh, be a passenger in this journey, it, it's not going to get you get you guys anywhere. So, really appreciate whoever, you know, took that effort to participate and, you know, forget your inhibitions, you know, go forth, I guess, yeah. Again, to just conclude, three things. Speak in Tamil if that's convenient. I don't understand, but we will get educated. So speak Tamil or speak whatever language matters, you should communicate, number one. Number two, asking stupid questions is a great idea. It is a challenge to me when my granddaughter asks questions. It's very tough to explain, but it forces you to simplify, clarify. So do not hesitate. What you think is a stupid question may be a genius question. Speak in Tamil, 
don't hesitate thank you